So off camera, I went ahead and set up a spreadsheet and um, I would recommend that you do the same thing. Go ahead and set up a spreadsheet that looks like mine so that you can follow along. Up to this point, whenever we've been doing these kind of time value of money calculations, we've always imagined that we knew some interest rate or some discount rate that we were using as a target. And we would find out basically the net present value and ask the question, can this investment, can this business idea, can it beat some target interest rate? With this calculation here, our goal is to find out what the actual rate of return is internally inside of this investment. And the way we do that is we find out this thing called the internal rate of return, the IRR, the internal rate of return. In a previous video, I showed how we would do that using an iterative solving method where basically you just guess a higher number, then guess a lower number, and you guess back and forth until you get to the point where the present value of the cash flows is equal to zero. And when you've done that, you found the internal rate of return. So for example, the uh, ca cash flows we have in front of us in a previous video, we found that the internal rate of return was somewhere around 16 or 17 percent, meaning that this is the equivalent of, of putting some money into an investment and earning that kind of interest rate. Uh, so what I want to do now is just show you here in cell uh, G16, the internal rate of return function in Microsoft Excel. So we type an equal sign and type IRR, excuse me, I typed it wrong, IRR, and then open parentheses, and as always, we get prompts from Microsoft Excel. And the first prompt is the value. So we're just going to take our, our mouse take our cursor, hover it over cell D4, we're going to click, hold down and drag all the way down and highlight all of this information. And then we type a comma and we get to enter a guess. The guess is an optional argument. I've never experienced a situation where actually entering in a guess did anything faster or better. So I'm going to delete that comma. I'm going to close my parentheses and Microsoft Excel is going to give me an internal rate of return. It's going to tell me what the return on this investment is. And I'm going to hit enter and I get 16%, which if you were to go to the previous video, you would see a very similar number. I'm pretty certain that I use the exact same uh, cash flows. But now I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, our cash flows here are uneven. If you look at the dates, these aren't once a year cash flows. So that's a bit of a problem. The internal rate of return that we just calculated does not take that into account. And so the thing we just did is wrong. In fact, I would go as far as to say that the basic internal rate of return uh, function in Microsoft Excel, or just simply calculating it, is going to give you an incorrect answer. And I don't think I would ever recommend that someone use the IRR function in Excel for a couple of reasons. The first reason is the unequal time period. So I'm going to skip down to this, the unequal time period internal rate of return. So this is the internal rate of return that you want to use when you have an unequal time period. And Excel is really clever. It can, it can integrate any date you want. You just got to enter the date that you expect the cash flow to happen and it works out quite well. So we type an equal sign and type XIRR. We do an open parentheses. And then, just like before, we highlight the value starting in cell D4 all the way down to cell D14. Let go of the mouse, type a comma, and now we enter in the dates associated with the cash flows, which is really handy if you have cash flows that happen for a couple of months and then they skip and nothing happens. These are just random numbers that I threw in there. They're really kind of meaningless, but I just made up numbers to show you an unequal cash flow. So we highlight those unequal cash flows, those dates, and we close parentheses and we hit enter and we get a different number. This time it's 18%. I would argue that the XIRR number is always superior to the IRR number because that way you don't have to worry about thinking about the cash flows and how they how they work. You just have to acknowledge the dates. And so if you know the dates of the cash flows, you can get a much better answer. Now the next one is a thing called a modified internal rate of return, the MIRR. So here's the logic behind the MIR. In order for the internal rate of return to work, the, the concept assumes that when you make money, for example, when you make this $10,000, that you're going to take that $10,000 and instead of live on it or use it to run some other aspect of the business, that you're going to take that $10,000 and put that $10,000 into an investment that earns 16%. Likewise, the IRR calculation assumes that this $90,000 that you have initially wasn't money you had just laying around. It's money you had to borrow and you borrowed it at 16%. In other words, it assumes that you're going to finance or borrow all of these negative cash flows 
at the internal rate of return of 16%. And then it assumes that you're going to take this other cash flow right here, your returns, and turn around and invest them at 16%, which is not really realistic. The reality is you're probably not going to reinvest that money. You're going to put that money into some other aspect of the business or take it home to live off of or whatever the, whatever the case may be. So there's a different version of this formula called the modified internal rate of return, the MIRR. For that one, we just type an equal sign and M-I-R-R and then open parentheses. And then it asks for values. That's our cash flows. That's our cash flows. Then it asks for a finance rate. So we type a comma and click on the finance rate. So the logic here is the first four years in this example, you have negative cash flows and you're going to be borrowing that at 5%. Then we type a comma and we type a reinvest rate. And that's going to be 3% in this case. In other words, all the positive cash flows that we get, we're going to turn around and put that in something like a savings account or a CD with a pitiful little 3% rate. And we're going to hold on to it and save it, which of course you wouldn't do in the real world. But at the same time, you can't assume that you're going to get a 16% rate of return on whatever alternative thing you would, you would do with it. We close parentheses, we hit enter and we get a number 12%. So the modified internal rate of return is going to give you a more accurate picture of exactly what the business is going to do because it doesn't assume that you can reinvest your positive cash flows at that same 16%. Now, if you're following along and if you're paying close attention, you notice that the MIRR that I just did has to be incorrect because the cash flows are not evenly spaced in this example. So what I need is I need an internal rate of return formula or, or a function that would take both of these ideas, the idea of an unequal time period and the idea of I'm borrowing money and I'm saving money at a different rate of return than what my business is going to net me and combine them into one function, uh, XMIRR, the, the modified internal rate of return, the modified internal rate of return for an unequal time period. So let's type that in. Let's type equals XMIRR, open parentheses. Wait, wait, wait something's not right here. Um, at this point, we should be getting a prompt telling us what to put into our, our function in Excel. So I must have done this wrong. It must be MXIRR open parentheses, wait, there's, there's no prompt there either. That's because there's not an Excel function to do this. I have no idea why there's not an Excel, Excel function to do this. If there is an Excel function to do this, I would, I would love for someone to show me how or link to a video where someone does it. I have found some stuff out there where people have done some uh, programming in Visual Basic in order to create a formula that will do this. You can take the formula for the modified internal rate of return. You can, you can just Google and find the formula and you could probably find some way in order to do this, but calculating it um, in Microsoft Excel is going to be cumbersome because there's not a built-in function in order to do it. For the students taking my class uh, at this point, unless I uh, show you how to do it and, and help you build a spreadsheet, because honestly, I don't think that it's something that will be easy to do, I wouldn't expect students to do this. But what I would expect is for people watching this video to understand that the IRR function, the internal rate of return function, has widely been uh, discredited. It's not something you would ever actually use. What you would use instead is if you have evenly spaced out uh, cash flows, you would use a modified internal rate of return unless you didn't have a good finance or reinvest rate. And then in that case, maybe you would use the internal rate of return. And if you do have unequal time periods, if your payments are spaced out, you would definitely have to use the XIRR. We're going to take the idea of a modified XIRR and we're going to take it and just kind of park it off to the side for now. 